All right, what's going on, my people? This is your host, Blanc Eden with Black Trending News. This is episode 19, and we're going to be talking about a sensitive subject today. I'm a person that has read the Bible front to back three times, and I've also read the Bible hundreds of times for a number of years, and um, just never noticed these things. And it's just really, just really quick before I start going into the contradictions and some of the violence that takes place in the Bible and the uh, different perspectives of the Bible that I want to share that I think are helpful. Whether you're a Christian or not or whatever, you know, if you found this video, obviously you are curious, right? And that's fine. Uh, nothing wrong with that. Like I said, I state facts. I can't make this stuff up. This is not my opinion. Sometimes I state my opinion. I always state when I'm stating my opinion. And when something is a fact, when it's a quote, I state it. So I think it's crazy how I've read the Bible so many times and did not notice these contradictions. It's really true. If you're not looking for something, you won't find it. Right. In this case, uh, I guess the people who have put together these list of contradictions were looking for them and they found them <laughs> it's funny uh when i was reading these contradictions that i'm getting ready to share i was just like my mouth is on the floor i was just like oh my god you know how many times i've read that and i never noticed that not one time so you know belief is very strong you know, religion is very strong and it can override a lot of things in your mind that may be right in front of your face. So let's get into it. Uh, you know, the Bible is believed to be unreliable, an unreliable authority because it contains a large number of contradictions. Uh, logically, if two statements are contradictory, at least one of them is false there we go so that's what contradict means one of them is false they, i mean they both couldn't have happened right and these are some events these are some serious events that take place in the bible that have to do with jesus and the the, the beginning of man so this is very eye-opening and i suggest that you really listen and follow up with your own reading and and so you can just know yourself, you know what I'm saying? Because I had to do that myself to make sure. The biblical contradictions, therefore, prove that the book has many false statements and is not infallible. All right. Uh, some examples of contradictions in the Old Testament. So the contradictions begin in the opening chapters of the Bible where inconsistent creation stories are told. In Genesis chapter 1, it says the first man and woman were made at the same time. And then the animals were made afterwards. But Genesis chapter 2 gives a different order of creation. Man, the animals, the woman. So right in the next chapter states something completely different so what is it which one is false i ask you which one is false right do you really know does the person who wrote it know like what was the person what was the point of putting these contradictive statements within the next chapter of itself you know it just doesn't make sense to me uh Let's keep going because I want to get through this as fast as possible. Genesis chapter 1 lists six days of creation, whereas chapter 2 refers to the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. One day versus six days, right? That's contradictory and that that's a big deal because there are a lot of people who who fast and, and, and have Sabbath, you know, that might interfere with that. I don't do that, but it might interfere with that. You know, if you if you hear this, you might say, oh, shoot, you know, this is true. What do I do? Um, moving along, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2 and 3 claims 
that God created light and divided it from darkness on the first day. But Genesis chapter 1, verse 14 and 9 through 19 tells you that the sun, the moon, and the stars weren't made until the fourth day. So the sun, the moon, and the stars are the light that we see in the sky. Uh, but right within a few verses, it's two totally different situations going on right like i just can't again i'm just blown away like i can't believe i never noticed this before uh chapter one reports that the fruit trees were created before man while chapter two shows they were made after him genesis chapter one verse 20 says the fowl were created out of the waters as well as other animals and uh, genesis Chapter 2, verse 19, alleges they were made from the ground. Was it both? When you read it, it doesn't look like it's both. It, it, to me, I feel like if it was both, maybe it would have been in the same sentence. It was said, and the ground, the water and the ground. Like, how is this written? Somebody enlighten me in the comment section. If you're, you know, a biblical scholar, which I am not, right? I've read the Bible, like I said, front to back three times. I have studied the Bible for years, like years, okay? But I'm not a biblical scholar. It's, it wasn't my life. So if you're a biblical scholar, please enlighten me in the comment section on some of these things. Let, let's talk about this because this is pretty serious stuff if you are a Christian. Uh, contradictions are also noted in the biblical story of a worldwide flood right most people know about that Noah's Ark according to Genesis chapter 6 verse 19 through 22 God ordered Noah to bring of every living thing of all flesh two of every sort into the ark but in Genesis chapter 7 verses 2 through 3 says that the Lord ordered Noah to take into the ark the clean beasts and the birds of sevens and the only and only the unclean beasts of twos. What did he tell Noah? Somebody somebody help me out. Like what did he say? You know. <laughs> did he say both? Did no did he say Noah come back? Don't do this, you know, change my mind. Like what's going on? Okay. Uh Genesis chapter eight, verse four reports as the waters of the flood receded. Noah's ark rested on the mountains of Ararat in the seventh month. The very next verse says, The mountaintops could not be seen until the tenth month. Which one was it? Right? This is, this is what contradicting means. Something's got to be wrong, right? But to me, if they're both there, then whoever wrote it doesn't know. So if they don't know... How the hell do we claim to know? This is my point, right? Genesis chapter 8 verse 13 describes the earth as being very dry on the first day of the first month. But the next verse, verse 14 says, The earth was not dry until the 27th day of the second month. Please somebody help me understand this. The Old Testament contains an interesting contradiction in the story of the census taken by King David and the resulting punishment of the Israelites. God was so angered by the census that he sent a plague to kill 70,000 men. Women, children, probably, you know, we could assume there's a mix of people in there. Uh, according to 2 Samuel chapter 24, verse 1, the Lord had caused David to take the census which makes the punishment appear even more nonsensical. But an attempt was later made at 1 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 1 to improve God's image by claiming that Satan incited the census. So again, if you're a scholar, let me know what that means. Break it down for me because this is interesting. I just found it to be interesting. I, Like I said, I couldn't believe it. You don't just forget the Bible. I didn't. I, I will never forget it, you know. And that's why I just had to share this because I'm like, maybe there's people out there that just still don't know. I think there's a lot of people that do know and there's a shitload of people that don't. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, further, the Old Testament is contradictory as to whether the Lord commanded the Israelites to sacrifice animals to him. In Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 22, God denies he ever gave the Israelites commandments about animal sacrifices. I mean, did God forget? No, I don't think so, right? In contrast, Exodus chapter 29, verses 38 through 42, and many other verses show God requiring the Israelites to offer animal sacrifices. So which one is it? Let's go over some uh, some contradictions in the New Testament, right? There's contradictions between the genealogies of Jesus given in the first chapter of Matthew and the third chapter of Luke, right? You know what else is weird? But I thought that there's different versions of... And you know, I never, at the time, I never thought anything of it. I just accepted it. Do you understand? That's what religion does. You accept it. Even you don't question it. And that is, you know, one reason why I have moved away from it. Uh, we just, you just accept it. You read it and accept it. You read three different versions. I believe it's three different versions of one story. What is, what is it? I mean, just saying it out loud blows my mind. It really does. Because it's like, I literally sat there and believed all three of these stories as if one of them was the real story. Like, what? And never thought to say, which one is the damn story? Let's keep going, people. Both genealogies begin with Jesus' father, who's identified as Joseph, which is curious given that Mary was supposedly impregnated by the Holy Ghost, right? And we, most of us know the story of that, you know, Joseph had to say that he was Jesus's father so that they wouldn't stone Mary and consider her a whore because she was a virgin. So that's that. But Matthew says Joseph's father was Jacob. While Luke claims he was Heli. Matthew lists 26 generations between Jesus and King David. Whereas Luke records 41 of them. Matthew runs Jesus' line of descent through David's son, Solomon, while Luke has it going through David's son, Nathan. Which one is it, my friends? <laughs> Which one is it? The story of Jesus' birth is also contradictory. Matthew chapter 2, verse 13 through 15 says, Joseph and Mary is fleeing to Egypt with the baby Jesus immediately after the wise men from the east brought him the gifts but luke chapter 2 verses 22 through 40 claim that after the birth of jesus his parents remained in bethlehem for the time of mary's purification which was 40 days under the mosaic law afterwards they brought jesus to jerusalem to present him to the lord and then returned to their home in nazareth luke mentions no journey into egypt or visit by wise men from the east please I mean, after a while, it just sounds like somebody made it up. What do you think? Let me know. I mean, I really want to know what you think. Uh, I am in no way, you know, shaming or doing nothing crazy like that. We're just talking. All right, let's keep going. Concerning the death of Judas, uh, the disloyal disciple, right? We know him. He's famous for being, for betraying Christ. Uh, Matthew chapter 27 verse 5 states he took the money he had received for betraying Jesus, threw it down in the temple, and went and hanged himself. I guess he felt so guilty he committed suicide, right? But uh, Acts verses 1 chapter 18 says Judas used the money to purchase a field and, quote, falling headlong, he burst asunder in the mist and all of his bowels gushed out. Okay, that's a whole different ball game. All right, we're talking about two completely different stories. What happened? Somebody let me know in the comment section. In describing Jesus being led to his execution, John chapter 19 verse 17 recounts that he carried his own cross, but Mark chapter 15 verse 21 through 23 contradicts it by saying a man called Simon carried his cross. Which one is it? Like to me, if, if something happened, Something happened, right? A fact is a fact, right? 
Like if I went to the store, I went to the store. Did I go to the store and then I made a stop? Then I went to the store? Like what is it? Did I go to the store or not? Maybe I never went to the store at all. I don't know, right? Nobody knows, like because it's not one story. Maybe if there was one story, this would be more believable to people who don't believe in it. But the fact that there's contradicting verses and extreme violence, which contradicts love and God, people have a problem with it. So again, if you're a scholar, help us out. Uh, let's see here. As for like Jesus's crucifixion, Matthew chapter 27, verse 44 says Jesus was taunted by both criminals who were being crucified with him, right? That three, three of them on crosses. I've, I've visually have seen that like on TV or in movies, but Luke chapter 23, verse 39 through 43 relates that only one of the criminals taunted Jesus. The other criminal rebuked the one who was doing the taunting and Jesus told the criminal who was defending him. Today shall be, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. Okay. So regarding the last words of Jesus while he was on the cross, right? Matthew 27 verse 46 and Mark chapter 15 verse 34 quote, Jesus is crying with a loud voice. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But over here in Luke Chapter 23, 46 gives his final words as father into thy hands. I command my spirit. John chapter 19, verse 30 alleges the last words were it is finished. So is it all three? Did he say all three of them? And they, they were all received in different times. What's going on? Okay. What's going on? My people help me out. All right. Cause I'm confused. I still want to know what you think. And what is the explanation to this? What is your rebuttal? Because to me, if you're a Christian and you love the Bible, you know the Bible, you should have some type of rebuttal. You should have some type of explanation and you should know, look, hey, I know this is what you read, but this is what it is. There are even contradictions in the accounts of the resurrection, right? The supposed event that is the very foundation of the Christian religion is contradictory. Uh... In Mark chapter 16, verse 2 states that on the day of the resurrection, certain women arrived at the tomb at the rising of the sun. But in John chapter 20, verse 1, it tells us they arrived when it was yet dark. And in Luke chapter 24, verse 2 describes the tomb as open when the women arrived. Whereas Matthew 28 Verse 1 and 2 indicates it was closed. Was it open or closed? What happened? Was it nighttime or morning time? What was it? Mark chapter 16, 5 declares that the woman saw a young man at the tomb. Luke 24, 4 says they saw two men. Mark 28, 2 reports they saw an angel. And John 20, 11 and 12 claims they saw two angels. <laughs> what the hell is going on? You know, like... So I'm going to keep going because I want to get into some of the parts of this. Um, the conflicting accounts of Paul's conversion can be cited. Uh, Acts chapter nine, verse seven states that when Jesus called Paul to preach the gospel, the men who were with Paul heard a voice, but saw no man. According to Acts 22, Verse 9, however, the men saw a light but didn't hear the voice speaking to Paul. Complete opposite. What happened? Somebody tell me. Okay? These are just a few. You know, and nobody has time to go into all of them. But just a few on their own. You know, there's just incorrect statements in the Bible. Like, what is, what do you believe when you have something that says this is what it is and it's nothing else? The Bible says it's this and nothing else. It's the word of God and nothing else. But the word of God contradicts itself. What is it then? Okay, let's talk about the inhumane cruelties of the Bible. Because this was very, uh, very much something I didn't even notice. Like I noticed it, but I didn't notice it, right? Uh, this is why one reason why people reject the Bible because of the outrageous cruelty and injustice, you know, 
that takes place. In civilized legal systems, a fundamental principle is that the suffering of the innocent is the essence of injustice. Yet the Bible teaches that God repeatedly violated his moral precept by harming innocent people. So let's talk about it. Why would a God of love harm innocent people? Let's talk about it. Instances of cruel and unjust behavior by the biblical God are seen in the most basic Christian doctrines. Some of God's acts that harmed the innocent are as follows. Here we go. He damned the whole human race and cursed the entire creation because of the acts of two people. My gosh, you know. Genesis 3, 16 to 23. Romans 5, verse 18. He drowned pregnant women and innocent children and animals at the time of the flood. Genesis 7, 20 through 23. Yes. Uh, you know, it says that everybody was bad, but let's think about it, right? Let's think about this. Do you really think that Noah and his family were the only family that were not bad? Tell me what you really think. Do you really think that there's a... Can you imagine a whole world and just one family is good and everybody else is bad? Come on. Right? Uh... That's Genesis 7, 20 to 23. He tormented the Egyptians and their animals with hail and disease because Pharaoh refused to let the Israelites leave Egypt. Exodus 9, 8 through 11 and 25. And he killed Egyptian babies at the time of the Passover. Exodus 12, 29 through 30. Now, people may say, oh, they were bad. They were this, they were that. and But it still happened. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, it, it's... It's like a God of love resolving things with death. It just, contra that's a contradiction in itself. We have to look at this just a little bit closer. Uh, after the Exodus, he ordered the Israelites to exterminate the men, women, and children of seven nations and steal their land. Deuteronomy 7, 1 and 2. He killed King David's baby because of David's adultery with Bathsheba. 2 Samuel 12, 13 through 18. He required the torture and murder of his own son. Romans 3, 24 and 25. And he promised to send non-Christians to eternal torture. Revelation 21, 8. <sighs> non-Christians have eternal t torture in hell. That That's a big one for people. And it's just a big one for people. You know, it's just, it's a little rigid you know uh other slaughters that were ordered by god the lord uh, unfairness heartlessness people would call this violent tales shocking bible passages extermination of people including children and the elderly okay um 1 Samuel 15, 3. The prophet Samuel gives King Saul his commandment from the Lord. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. Ezekiel 9, 4 through 7 has this harrowing account. And the Lord said unto him, Go through. The mist of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in mine hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women. But come not near any man upon whom is the mark. Clear as day merciless for you know they say that god is merciful but this seems merciless you know i don't know it just does uh hosea thirteen sixteen describes a punishment from the lord samaria shall become desolate for she hath rebelled against her god they shall fall by the sword their infants shall be dashed in pieces and their women with child 
shall be ripped up. My goodness. Like this doesn't if this doesn't sound like God, a God of love. It sounds like man. Okay, it sounds like man. Deuteronomy 32, 23 to 25 says that after the Israelites incited God's jealousy by worshiping other gods, he vowed, I will spend mine arrows upon them. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin, the suckling also with the man of gray hairs. Goodness. In Numbers chapter 31. The Lord approves of these instructions that Moses gave to the Israelite soldiers about how to treat certain women and the, and the children captured in war. It says, Now therefore kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman that hath known man by lying with him. But all the women children that have not known a man by lying with him keep alive for yourselves. Isaiah 13, 9, 15 through 18 contains this message from God. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger. Everyone that is found shall be thrust through. Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes and their wives ravished. Behold, I will stir up the meads against them. They shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes will not spare children. All right, so these verses, they put God and the biblical God <clears throat> the biblical God in the light of a, a sociopathic murderer like that <laughs> I mean there's a lot of death going on you know um and these are again just a few passages this is this is not nearly all of them right not nearly all of them and they're very graphic and they're very cruel and they're very upfront this is there's no guessing this it's not disputable this is using words like kill every woman okay um, other cruel methods almost done here he caused the earth to open and swallow entire families numbers 16 37 through 32 he used fire to devour people leviticus 10 1 and 2 numbers 11 1 and 2 and he punished the Israelites with wars, famines, and pestilences. Ezekiel 5, 11 through 17. He sent wild animals such as bears. 2 Kings 2, 23 through 24. Lions. 2 Kings 17, 24 and 25. And serpents. Numbers 21, 6. To attack people, he sanctioned slavery. Yes, he did. This is another big one. Breaks my heart. Uh, Leviticus 25, 44 through 46. Go check it out. He ordered religious persecution in Deuteronomy 13, 12 through 16, and he caused cannibalism. Jeremiah 19 and 9. What well, some would consider disproportionate punishments by God. The biblical God is also guilty of inflicting punishments that are grossly disproportionate to the acts committed in the American legal system, such as Disproportion violates the U.S. Constitution's Eighth Amendment, which prohibits cruel and unusual, unusual punishments. But it's in the Bible. To punish people who are completely innocent, as seen in the preceding Bible verses, constitute punishment that is horribly disproportionate to the moral of these people. Sounds like slavery to me. Sounds like slavery to me, right? For example, the Old Testament says the Lord prescribed execution for the crimes of working on the Sabbath. Exodus 31, 15. Cursing one's parents. Leviticus 29. Worshiping other gods. Deuteronomy 7, 2 through 5. Enticing a friend or family member to worship other gods. Deuteronomy 13, 6 through 10. Being a witch, medium, or wizard. Exodus 22, 18. Leviticus 20, 27. Engaging in homosexual acts. Leviticus 20, 13. And not being a virgin on one's wedding night. Deuteronomy 22, 20 through 21. God became far worse in regard to imposing excessively severe punishments in the New Testament, according to a lot of people. 
It would be hard to imagine anything more cruel and disproportionate than punishing, punishing people with eternal torture for mere disbelief that Jesus was the son of God. Can we just look at that and go, what? It just doesn't make sense, right? It just doesn't, it seems like, it seems very aggressive and it seems very controlling. It seems very ultimatum-ish, okay? Uh, the inability to believe that proposition harms no one and it has been disbelieved by some of the greatest benefactors of humanity. But God promises to punish them and all other non-believers with the most horrible pain conceivable. More uh, human violence. Okay. Uh, many of them reasoned that since God, who was considered just and loving, committed or approved of the most brutal acts good christians need not have qualms about behaving likewise slavery slavery such logic led the american patriot thomas Paine to say the belief in a cruel god makes a cruel man The main cause of this cruelty was the Christian doctrine of eternal punishment. McCabe says, If it was natural to reason, God punishes men with eternal torment. It is surely lawful for men to use doses of it in a good cause. <clears throat> Slavery. What they considered was a good cause, right? Not for us, but for them. Other historical examples of violent and unjust acts Supported by biblical teachings include the Inquisition, the Crusades, the burning of witches, religious wars, pogroms against Jews, persecution of homosexuals, forceful conversions of heathens, slavery, beatings of children, brutal treatment of the mentally ill, suppression of scientists, whippings, mutilations, violent executions of persons convicted of crimes. Those acts were a regular part of the Christian world for centuries people uh, I'm almost done here let me see if I want to touch on one more thing I'm going to close with this because the belief that supernatural beings control the world, people have often misdirected their energies in attempting to solve problems. Instead of studying the world to discover scientific solutions to problems, they performed religious activities. Christian theologians during those centuries thought the plagues were caused by the anger of God or the malevolence of Satan. The Bible gave them ample support for their belief. It contains numerous instances of God punishing people by means of pestilence. In the book of Exodus, Numbers, and Jeremiah. And in describing Jesus' healing miracles, the New Testament attributes the following afflictions to demons. Blindness, muteness, lameness, epilepsy, and insanity. All to blame on the devil instead of going maybe something else is wrong let's try to fix it we just blame it on something and do away with them so these teachings led to the early church leaders to promote the idea that demonic activity is the primary cause of disease for example St. Augustine whose views strongly influenced western thought for over a thousand years said in the fourth century all diseases of Christians are to be ascribed to these demons people let me know what you think in the comment section um, I know I've said that several times because this is a, a serious topic you know religion is a big 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 deal in the world so let me know what you think. Are you affected by this? Are you shocked? Do you need a moment? Are you still processing? You want to get back to me? Let me know. All right? Like and subscribe. Share. Subscribe for more. Hit the notica notification bell so you can know when I put out a video. I post five, six videos a week. All right, guys. Take care. Go ahead and check out season one. 
and season two. Have a good night.